Hey there, everyone. Recently, I was having a conversation with some friends, a pretty good conversation uh, about prepping routines, our different prepping routines. And the conversation kind of turned into more of a conversation about uh, how to stay engaged with prepping. Uh, to me, there's three, three things, three major things that can really kind of derail your preparedness plans. Uh, those are complacency, uh, distractions, and I think the biggest one is probably finances. Sometimes it's we just don't have the money to do what we need to do. Uh, so what I wanted to do today was go through my routine, uh, some of the things that I do on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis that kind of help me stay engaged with preparedness. But like I said, there's those three things, complacency, distractions, and budgeting. With complacency, it's really easy to become complacent, especially when preparedness is concerned because nothing you know, happens all, of, all that much. Uh, but we need to be ready for when it does. So uh, at times we can be like, okay, I've been doing this for years and nothing's happened, or I've been doing this for six, eight months, and you know, is it really worth my time? Uh, and we can become complacent, and that's pretty dangerous because if something does happen, even if it's something small, uh, we're not going to be ready for that, or we're going to be, you know, we're going to think we're ready, but we're actually not ready. Uh, distractions is a tough one too because life just kind of gets in the way all the time, right? Sometimes those are absolutely unavoidable situations, you know, when when stuff happens that you actually have to deal with. Uh, this kind of goes into finances as well. Uh, but sometimes they're, you know, subconscious. We create those distractions. If it's something that we don't want to do with preparedness, we're just not looking forward to, inventory and rotation comes to mind. If it's something we're not looking forward to, uh, we create distractions. Well, I've got to get this done or I've got to get that done uh, instead of doing what we have to do. So uh, distractions also play a big role in us uh, uh, maintaining our preparedness level. Uh, and then finances, you know, finances, and I'm going to go through how I budget uh, here in just a second, but finances play a big role. Sometimes there's just, there just isn't money to do that. Now, there are some things we could do to become pre better prepared that don't cost any money, a, a lot of things actually, uh, but it, inevitably we're going to need to spend that money. So we're going to have to figure out a prepping budget, whether it's on food or supplies or anything like that. So uh, with those, you know, those are the three main things. If you have any ideas or any comments about what kind of derails your plans, make sure and leave a comment below. Uh, but I want to go through the, a few things that I do uh, that kind of help me maintain my preparedness level. The first one is staying up on current events. And this doesn't mean religiously watching the news and you know getting in line and getting freaked out about some of the things that are going on. People are saying this, people are saying that, paying attention to conspiracy theories, all of that stuff. Uh, it just means make sure you, you kind of, you're gauging your environment, you know what's going on. This is especially important on a local level because usually the news is more of a national or statewide thing where in your county or in your neighborhood, uh, you don't quite get the information you get on a national scale. So uh, paying attention to that stuff is important because that's the stuff uh, that you know could, could affect you the most. New development, uh, military, all of that different stuff. Uh, how the neighborhood is changing, just you know, police scanners and all of that. Paying attention to that stuff and making sure you're up on the information about what's going on in your area. Uh, after, after that, um, it's creating a threat assessment. And what I do is I try to get this monthly and just kind of glance over my threat assessment. Okay, this was my priority last month. Has that changed? Has any of the any outside factors change that, that affect that threat assessment? Has anything moved up or anything moved down? Uh, is my preparedness level for that certain scenario, uh, is that better or worse than it was last month? And I just kind of go over that. Uh, sometimes I'm, I'll miss them here and there, but I try to do that once a month at least and get an idea about where I am. Uh, and then, like I said earlier, I try to create a monthly budget to figure out how much I have that I can spend on preparedness that month, whether it be for food or supplies I need or fuel or anything like that. Uh, what I do is I create a budget. You, you have to make sure and pay attention where your money is going. Uh, that way you know exactly how much you have to spend. There may be some months where there just isn't that extra money. Uh, there may be quite a few of those months. Some people have more money than we do, but I think the vast majority of us uh, need to, you know, 
need to budget each month about how much we can spend. Uh, when I do my budgets, I plan everything out. I plan how much extra we're going to have. And then from there, I can go into, okay, how much of that can I use for food storage, for fuel, for anything like that. Uh, the important thing about doing a budget too is make sure you do like a couple months in advance because just because say you get this paycheck and you've got eight, $800 left over or whatever the number is uh, and you think, okay, I can spend a couple of hundred bucks on food storage. But then a month down the line, you know, you're going to be two or three hundred dollars short. So you're like, well, I shouldn't have spent that money on that. So make sure you just kind of do it out a few months. All of that's going to change because there's no way to pinpoint exactly what you're going to spend. But it gives you a really good idea. And that way, you know exactly what's in your bank account, what you can spend without, you know, blowing everything out of proportion. And then the next one I try to do on a quarterly basis, I don't do this every month, but inventory and rotation is one of those things that I just, you know, I, it's, I, I dread kind of uh, having to go through all the stuff and look through all the stuff and seeing what I have, especially, you know, food storage is fairly easy. Everybody thinks that's pretty tough, but if you're using your food storage, it's fairly easy. You know exactly what you have. Uh, it's the stuff that, you know, there's a lot of supplies and preparedness. You just don't use that often. Uh, and you got to make sure they're where they're supposed to be. You know, our lights out kit, making sure that, you know, the batteries are still in there. The stuff is still in there. The kids will grab stuff and uh, you just don't know sometimes. So making sure and doing that inventory helps you stay on top of your game because you, you, you know exactly how prepared you are. You don't think you're more prepared than you actually are. Uh, you know, you go one month and you think oh, you've just spent, maybe you spent a couple hundred dollars on food storage uh, and you think you're good to go. You wait a month or two and you still think that you're pretty good with that. But if you do your inventory and rotation, you might find out that, okay, I don't have uh, all the stuff that I thought I had. So inventory and rotation is an important one. Uh, it's one of those that, you know, it's not the most fun thing to do. Uh, but it is certainly uh, an important one when it comes to maintaining your preparedness level. And then a couple more I have here. One is uh, learning new skills. Uh, and this doesn't need to be anything like high level. I mean, it could be something super simple. Starting fires, you know, most of us probably already know that stuff. Tying knots. I mean, just doing something that's new. Something that kind of opens the doors a little bit. Something that, you know, may be useful in some sort of you know, short-term SHTF event, long-term SHTF event, just learn something new. Uh, this is, you know, especially important on those months when, you know, those leaner months when maybe you don't have uh, the money to do that. In the summertime, depending on your climate as well, uh, there's a lot of outdoor activities we can be doing and learning different stuff. The wintertime, it's a little bit more of a challenge, uh, but, uh, you know, that's, you know, it's, it's one of those things we just have to kind of kind of play with, but always learning something new, trying to learn something new at least once a month, to, you know, two times a month, three times a month, trying to learn something new. Uh, along with that, the final one I've got here is practicing the skills that I already know. And I separated these because, you know, there's a, a lot of skills that we need in when it comes to preparedness. Uh, but we also need to maintain those skills. Uh, shooting comes to mind. The, the bushcraft stuff comes to mind. Uh, fire starting, all of that different stuff. Uh, we need to make sure we're ready, you know, not that we've learned it uh, a few years ago and we should be able to do it. Uh, we need to be practicing that stuff and doing that stuff. And that's where, you know, maybe going camping, going hiking, uh, doing all of that stuff kind of helps you hone those skills and practice those skills. That way, when you actually need them, uh, you're going to have them and, and have, you're going to be ready to go as much as possible anyway. Uh, when the poop hits the fan. So uh, those are kind of some of the things that I do. Uh, I'm going to write an article about this and kind of list it a little bit better here in the near future. Uh, make sure and go to survivalistprepper.net and check, check that out. Uh, if I have that done, I'll make sure I'll put the description. I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, but uh, if you guys have any ideas, I'd love to hear them. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure and subscribe below. Uh, and also, let me know what, what you do to kind of help maintain your preparedness level.